Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Habitual Line Crosser, and today we're talking about drone defense. I get asked pretty often about drone defense. You know, what does America have? What are they using? You're seeing drones all over the battlefields of Ukraine, commercial off-the-shelf drones <clears throat> being able to cause havoc. Now, when you're looking at things like Ukraine, you're seeing around, last I read the figures, around 25 drones per square mile of front line. There's constantly drones in the air. So the United States really picked up on this. And about four or five years ago, they said, we need to solve this issue. Originally, they had the uh, drone Counter UAS schools, counter UAS stands for counter unmanned aerial systems. While I'm doing this video, keep in mind, uh, UAS, which is unmanned aerial systems, UAV, which is unmanned aerial vehicle, and RPA, remote piloted aircraft, will all be synonymous. I'm sure some wonderful officer somewhere got some OER bullets for coming up with different acronyms for the exact same things. UAS is also sometimes referred to as unmanned aerial surveillance. So some number of years ago, the United States decided that drones are a huge problem and we need to be able to address these things. So they started the counter UAS school in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. That eventually got closed down it was moved up here to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Some of the systems that these counter UAS school teaches are the FS lids, the fixed sight low slow small unmanned aircraft system integrated defeat system. They really pushed really hard for that one. The Ninja, which is by far my favorite acronym. We're definitely going to go into the Ninja here in a little bit. The Negation of Improvised Non-State Joint Aerial Threats. They pushed the envelope for that acronym and we thank them. The Corian, Counter Remote Rem Control Model Aircraft Integrated Air Defense Network. The Mounted Mobile System, LMATIS. The Light Mobile Air Defense Integrated System. And then you have the Bal Balshatri, I don't even know how to say that, the Drone Buster, and the Smart Shooter, also known as the Smash. We're not going to touch on every single one of these, but I do want to break down a couple of them and what they bring to the fight, and then a couple of them that are not on this list that are really coming out in the modern fight. So, first on the list, we have the Ninja. The Ninja, again, is the negation of improvised non-state joint aerial threats. And what it is, is you have a kind of base receiver and you have an antenna and it maps an area. Now it is scalable. You can make it bigger. You can make it uh, smaller. You can have it cover certain areas. You can add additional systems to it. It's actually a really, really cool system. And the whole purpose of the Ninja is to gather information about the drone threats that are coming in and and combat that information. It's a jamming system. That's what a lot of these systems that we're currently using, aside from some of the kinetic ones and, and directed energy that we'll go into, they are jamming systems. So what this the Ninja does specifically is as a drone flies into its envelope, it will pick up the signal from the drone, it'll trace it back to where it came from, so then boom, immediately before you know anything is wrong with your drone, they know exactly where you're hiding at in your little hidey hole. So congratulations, bad guys. You just fucked around and found out. It then <clears throat> will jam the system one of two ways, which is similar to a lot of our counter drone systems. It will either A, jam it so that it returns to sender, so then they can just follow that drone back to you, and then boom, surprise, you have a missile on top of you. Or B, it will jam the GPS signal from the drone and will eventually just either A, drop out of the sky, or B, land on the ground, depending on what type of drone it is. So then they can get all the information from it. It also maps all the information coming in and out of it, uh, including its visuals, um, if it has any kind of cameras on board. It's actually a really, really cool system when it is functional. But that is the Ninja. Up next, we have the Drone Buster. It looks like a radar gun. It doesn't look very cool. Honestly, they could put forward grip on it. Like, I don't know who's developing this thing, but you really need to put some effort into it. It has a range of between 750 and 1,000 meters, or what it says is 300% of the range from the antenna to the receiver. I don't really know. I have no idea how to scale that. But again, just like the Ninja, what the Drone Buster does is you point it at a drone, and it... It's, it picks up all the information coming to or from that drone. This one can't triangulate where it came from. However, you can either A, shut it down and it'll either drop out of the sky or it'll land, which is GPS jamming, or B, it will jam it in a way that it loses signal from the receiver and then it'll, depending on the model, it will return to home where it came from. So those are two of the uh, kind of cyber systems we have, but they're not half bad. They work. Um, many, many members of the armed forces are going through the u.s army's counter uas school right now including special operations we're handing them these things and like this is how this works because drones are very very prevalent on the battlefield today hey guys this video has been brought to you by gamer sauce it's a wonderful energy drink alternative with zero sugars zero carbs that is keto friendly there is like a hundred servings in this thing so you pack this bad boy into your bag when you go to the field and around day 10 or 11 when everyone knows that nicotine and caffeine happen to be forms of currency you are covered as long as you got water. And you always got water. It's just out of a water buffalo that's been left over from World War II. We know how it is.
So remember, when you're in the field on day 10 smelling like asses, don't forget Grandpa's ashes. <laughs> it's fucking great, man. Like, I love this shit so much. Use promo code HABIT or click the link in the description of this video to get yourself 10% off your order. And while you're there, go ahead and tack on some of those free samples. And if you want to, get yourself some, these are sus snacks, 100 calories. They're, they're, look, they're delicious. I look, fucking note to self, HLC, do not eat the entire box of promo fucking snacks. God damn. Now I gotta order some more. Get yourself some gamer subs today. Back to the video. Up next on the list, we have the Smash, the Smart Shooter. The Smart Shooter is probably one of the coolest anti-drone things that we have nowadays. Um, it's more than a sight. You, it, in, it integrates with a random M4. Boom, it is, that is the M4 that it integrates with, right? You can put it on any, any uh, M4 platform. Once it's in there, you identify your target. Once you identify your target, it will then adjust windage speed, how far away that thing is, how far it's moving. It'll do everything for you, and it'll put a little crosshair right in front of it. You then hold the trigger like you're firing, and as you're moving, trying to get the crosshairs to line up with that circle in front of your target, as soon as it lines up, the gun will decide when to shoot. And when it does, it works very, very effectively. So, circumstantially, you have turned any rifle into an anti-drone weapon just by attaching the Smash Smart Shooter on top of that bad boy. And, and for that, we are very thankful as Americans. Plus, all the Special Forces guys, they don't really like all the laser weapons. They wanted, like, I want to shoot the drone. Okay. I mean, so we'll do something weird. Um, I'm also learning from their website this can be used against people. I think that's safe. I mean, ultimately, it's just a site, right? It's just a smart site. I don't know how I feel about that, but in my job, we use them against drones, and it works significantly better than when you have uh, special or special forces, security forces running around certain air bases in the Middle East with 12 gauges shooting down drones. That's a real thing. I saw it happen. It was like something out of a movie. There was a YouTube dragon lady and then there was a drone and then some freaking uh, security forces rolled up in their little pickup truck and they just like got out and started to like smoking the drone. It was hilarious. It was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, moving on. Hey Jesse, you said that you were going to teach us about laser weapons. So far, we've seen some some cyber jamming, and we've seen a gun built for drones. Where's this? Where's this laser at? Don't you worry, your little self. Introducing Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense, or DEM Shorad for short. Now, the M Shorad platform is on on top of a striker. It's a big, big girl. Trust me, I've stood next to one of these things. They are enormous the first unit in the army who has gotten these things they got one platoon of them there's four of them is 460th air defense artillery out of fort sill oklahoma they happen to have one platoon of these and they have several platoons of the kinetic m shorad now what is the difference between these things obviously one is directed energy one throws things at the bad guys both of them have their uses but the benefit versus the cost on certain things right so a lot of people are talking about how much it costs to shoot down a drone i'm not really sure what's the figure what's the cost on a uh, stinger okay a stinger i just looked it up uh costs thirty eight thousand dollars in modern america and that's pretty expensive especially when you're talking about shooting down a 200 hundred dollar drone now don't get me wrong america has the budget to be able to do that for a long 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 time but can we do it cheaper? So directed energy Shorad was has become a thing. They put lasers on top of a freaking striker. Freaking strikers with freaking laser beams. Also, shout out to the company that designed this thing. Complete failure of research and development. This laser produces no light and creates no sound. We have a real missed opportunity for Death Star sounds, and the fact that that doesn't happen is kind of upsetting, at least for me. But anyways, at a range that we can't say, and a distance we can't say, and a size that we can't say, unfortunately, M. Shorad is a very, very new program, so the information about it is incredibly limited. It doesn't even say how many that you can target at the exact same time. Now, I do happen to have some friends who work with the system and have told me all that information, but I can't give away that information because I wasn't able to find it on the internet. So, that being said, for roughly the cost of a gallon of diesel, which the United States military spends, I don't know, like $4.30 per gallon, for roughly the cost of a gallon of diesel, you can down a size 3 or lower drone. Now, the sizes of drones, you're going to have to look all this up on your own. You got size 1 to size five or six and like five or six is uh, like global hawk like big big birds and size one is like the size of your hand so anything up to size three and below um you're good with the directed energy maneuver short range air defense system now the kinetic the kinetic's a little bit different so the kinetic has two pods now the pictures that we're showing you some of them happen to have two hellfires on there the hellfire was nixed last minute now it has eight stingers on board and the reason the hellfire was nixed i've heard several different reasons one that the recoil like caused an issue with the turret ring on top of the the truck 
or um, that the back blast was too hot. Honestly, I can't confirm any of that, but what it looks like to me is that stingers are just significantly faster. And when you're shooting down air targets, a Hellfire moves at around Mach 1, a fast mover might be able to outrun that, but a stinger moves at Mach 2.2 and they're not going to be able to outrun that. So that's probably, at least in my theory, why they went with two pods of four stingers each. So there's eight stingers up on top. They also have a 7.62 machine gun and they got a 30 mic mic in case things need to get nasty. In case you're wondering, yes, that 30 mic mic can depress so that it doesn't have to always shoot in the air and can handle other things like destroying rifles that are in a bad guy's hand. Look, we, we, we may bend the rules of land warfare, but at the end of the day, they're doing it too. So I don't really feel too bad about it. But that is the difference. So Directed Energy M Shorad uses a 50 kilowatt laser with possible upgrades in the future. And Kinetic M Shorad has a loadout of 762, 30 mic mic, and eight stingers on board that bad boy. Plus they can both carry troops who can carry man pad stingers, which is the man portable air defense system, which is just a stinger that you put on your shoulder and smoke stuff. Been, been putting in work since like the 1970s. It's a very, very good system. And it's why we keep it around. But imagine this, again, your communism and you're mad at the United States because they're better at everything than you are. And you have a couple of drones, you're going to go bomb them, you're feeling spunky. And out of nowhere, your drones just burst into flames and fall to the ground and you have no idea where it came from. That is also a benefit of directed energy maneuver short range air defense. So instead of a missile trail leading up to your drone or gunfire tracers going past your drone and you know exactly where it came from, all of a sudden there's a drone and then there's a melted pile of metal and glass and, and plastic and whatever else that that thing was made out of. I will say that there are caveats to everything that I talk about here. There's a lot more systems that I didn't even go over. Um, obviously, you know, Honorable mention to CWIS or CRAM. Well, CRAM is LPWS, Land-Based Phalanx Weapon System. CRAM is its job. And CWIS is Close In Weapon System from the Navy. Navy developed the system. We gave it a tan, stuck it on the back of a trailer, and now the Army uses it too. Um, it, it fires around 3,000 rounds of 20 millimeter, either high explosive or depleted uranium, depending on its purpose, uh, rounds at a minute. And that is, that's just a straight up bullet hose. And it works really, really well. It shoots down rockets, mortars, artillery. It shoots down drones. You can, you can program that thing, honestly, to smoke anything in its AO. Downside is, it's very expensive to throw that kind of lead at something. So I feel like directed energy is going to be the way forward. We now have directed energy weapons on board uh, the U.S. Navy ships. I believe the destroyers have them, the Arleigh Burke class destroyers. And then they're talking about putting them on board the F-35 for directed energy weapons, which is just, honestly, it's overkill at this point. Like, you have something you can't find, you can't see, that can do pretty much everything better than you, and now we give it fucking laser weapons, because America. Like, at this point, we need to just, you know, it's, it's a good thing politicians give us a handicap, because without that, nobody else would stay the chance. Um, that being said, do not give in to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and if you would like to support, please go to habituallinecrosser.com. Play me out.